Today, I want to talk about and analyze one of the most beloved and hyped stocks in the industry. The current bear market makes strong companies act like crypto scams. Palantir is down 60% from the beginning of the year and today I'm going to be exploring the company to see if Palantir has upside potential at this discounted price. Palantir was founded in 2003 after the 9-11 event by PayPal co-founder Peter Thiel, who initially wanted to apply the fraud recognition software designed at PayPal to stop terrorist attacks. Peter Thiel is still the biggest shareholder of the company, owning around 8% of Palantir. Palantir's first product was its government product Gotham, which had FBI and the CIA as its first customers. Nowadays, the company sells three individual products. All of Palantir's offerings act as operating systems. Gotham is the operating system for intelligence and defense. Foundry is the operating system for the modern enterprise, while Apollo is the operating system for deploying and managing complex software across multiple environments. Let's get into a short overview of each product. Gotham is a government software platform used primarily by intelligence agencies. It ingests large data sets, allows users to create connections between the data. Gotham helps detect unusual or suspicious patterns in large data sets. The platform enables users to merge, process and visualize data from multiple sources and the data is presented in an easy to understand format such as graphs or maps and it also offers pre-built scenarios that users can implement. The second product is Foundry, which is the corporate version of Gotham. It has additional focus on low-code and no-code environments, for instance, drag and drop interfaces. Foundry's front-end capabilities enable anyone to analyze datasets in a point-and-click environment. Foundry offers everything that a company needs to implement complex operational workflows. This includes data and model integration, applications building, a self-serve analytics, and a decision orchestration layer designed to capture learnings from end users and feed these to the data teams. An important advantage is that both Gotham and Foundry are infrastructure agnostic and they can be overlaid atop of existing operating softwares and integrated with all types of databases and even isolated systems like those found in submarines, airplanes and space exploration networks. Lastly, the third product that Palantir sells is Apollo. Apollo is a continuous deployment software platform for managing releases into the production environment. It allows developers to stage their code make sure the code is ready for deployment and then to release the code in a smooth process to ensure that no bad code gets out into the real world. Apollo manages both Gotham and Foundry, providing updates for the customer software, kind of what Tesla does to its regular autopilot upgrades. Since the commercial side of the business is growing faster than the governmental one, let's see in more detail how Foundry works. Firstly, in terms of analytics, Foundry provides two primary tools for point-and-click analysis, Contour and Quiver. Contour allows users to perform data analysis on tabular data, while Quiver is optimized for working with time series data. Both applications allow users to visualize, filter and transform data without code and to organize complex analysis. Another important tool is the Pipeline Builder. Pipeline Builder is Foundry's latest application for data integration. It can be used to build data integration pipelines that transform raw data sources into clean outputs ready for further analysis. Next up we have the Palantir's Software Defined Data Integration or the SDDI which is Hyper Auto. The Software Defined Data Integration connects and integrates data from ERP systems like SAP or NetSuite and from customer relationship management systems like Salesforce enabling insights in hours instead of months. Lastly, we have the ontology or the digital twin. The ontology is an AI and machine learning operational layer that sits on top of the digital assets like datasets and models and connects them to their real world counterparts like products or consumer orders to facilitate better decision making. Since many decision makers aren't technical users comfortable with code or IT concepts, ontology allows users to engage with data represented in standard business terms that they use every day. The ontology allows analytics teams, data scientists and business decision makers to collaborate in real time. So if Palantir has such a strong offering and such an advanced platform, why is the stock down so much? Besides the fact that Palantir got extremely expensive following its IPO, the market is now really fond of companies that generate real free cash flow and gap profitability. Peter Thiel built Palantir slowly from the ground up during the last 15 years, which is focused on growth and not yet on profitability. Peter Thiel's vision of creating a long-lasting software company didn't change and this doesn't sit well with the market in the short term. The stock market is in a cycle phase where it rewards profitability and it punishes 
the growth at all cost. Palantir will still be out of favor for the next couple of months, but in my opinion, the company's long-term vision and execution are much more important. Palantir's offering is very similar to a platform business model. It targets directly a company's developers and allows them to build their own unique applications, creating a high level of customization. This is exactly Palantir's MO as it forces its engineers to communicate with the customers to better understand their needs. Here are some of the competitive advantages for Palantir's business model. Palantir is heavily focused on the user interface and the process design. Non-technical users love the intuitiveness, visualization features, and the ease of navigation. Secondly, Palantir's purpose is to provide an operating system for the modern enterprise. The reason why Palantir can effectively offer the operating system is because of its ability to analyze unstructured data. Unstructured data doesn't have a fixed format like PDF documents, pictures, or videos, and represents around 80% of the data that organizations process daily. Next, Palantir has a strong offering in terms of cybersecurity. Its platform is designed for intelligence agencies and military purposes which are target of more sophisticated attacks than the average corporation. Next, we have the high switching cost. If the development team builds a unique customizable solution through a platform's offering, then the switching costs are significant. Lastly, we have the customer activity that informs future solution opportunities, which translates into network effects, which are the best type of mode. A good example is within the aviation industry, where Palantir launched in 2017 the aviation data platform Skywise together with Airbus. Historically, each aircraft produces a vast amount of data that's collected in silos by a number of different parties. Because of this, rectifying equipment issues is often a lengthy process. The open source platform Skywise allows stakeholders to collect all of this data into a single platform and applies analytics to help them make more informed decisions that improve the engineering, maintenance and flight operations. To conclude, more industries and more users will generate more data for Palantir to digest and develop deeper intrinsic knowledge of an organization's data problems. As a proof of Foundry's success, Palantir has been recognized as the leader in artificial intelligence and machine learning by the renowned advisory firm Forrester. Foundry received the highest possible scores in product vision, performance, market approach, and applications criteria. Still, in spite of a great platform, there are also many risks involved with Palantir. The biggest execution risk for Palantir is the data aggregation. Although Palantir claims that it never gets access to the data that it processes, this is still a hot topic, since some corporations aren't willing to partner with Palantir since they've been involved in spying. Palantir actually helped the US and the UK's digital spy agencies manage mass surveillance programs like XKScore, which is a secret system used by the US National Security Agency for searching and analyzing global internet data in real time. So Palantir's handling of big sensitive data is a double-edged sword since the bad reputations of being involved in spying will always be lurking around. To conclude, Palantir software is very popular with the end users for two reasons. Firstly, the intuitiveness and ease of use. Secondly, the ability to mold to any underlying infrastructure. And lastly, the ability to integrate with various data sources to extract, make connections and present easy to digest information. There's plenty of growth potential for Palantir, especially at this cheap valuation. I'll be discussing this in a complete financial analysis of the company, showcasing its risks, its valuation, and if I'm buying Palantir stock at this massive discount. Until next time, keep crushing it and subscribe.